Right, oh Tommy, this rash, we play, let's start her. So we're back, we're going to bait into this starter. So this is Eden, just got these long screw bolts cracked loose. So the starter is a bit different to the dynamo, <coughs> much as they're both a motor. The starter, you, you put power into it, where the dynamo <coughs> creates power. So. But they're both a motor, really. So if you turn the dynamo, it creates power, whereas this, you put power into it, and it turns. And it has four brushes. So I think these brushes can be bought new. <coughs> right. So I think we have to take off these lads here. There should be an insulator in there, because this is your positive feed inwards. <coughs> so, what are we looking at there? Seven sixteenths. That should come off handy enough. All brass, so you rarely get too rusty. Okay, so I'll leave in the tray there. Fiber, fiber, and fiber. So that's good. They, they could actually come in fairly handy, them lads. Okay. Let's see what this is now. What's that made of? Feels. It's just a metal kind of a. I don't think that's factory. metal kind of a spacer okay and we have the plastic lad here so that's kind of homemade okay that's they were shoving down in there so there's a dimple here like on the dynamos so that just helps locate your plate so we'll just tap that out a matter of going around with a screwdriver. Okay, so we have yeah, so one wire is broke there. That one is riveted on there, so that's a negative one. So two of these should be negative and two should be positive. That's okay. Yeah. And we can't actually take this plate fully off because it's attached to. We must get an a set of impact drivers with the screwdriver heads, so that you can put them in there and you hit them. The belt of a hammer and it actually loosens them, but it's very hard to loosen. So by rights, you have to take out two of these, I think, and they'll come with these wires. So you some of them attached, and I'd say they're fun now to get out. Say the least. Will we have a go at taking them out? Well, I've yet to ever get one of these out because I don't have an impact driver. But we will give it a go. I don't have a Phillips screwdriver big enough for that either. That's half the problem. Not hopeful that any of these will come out, but it could be a surprise. Yeah. No, not hopeful at all. No. So maybe all we will be able to do is work with 
whatever comes off here. So, so we get a look at the condition of some of these springs. Some of these can be fairly well rusted on. Okay, so that's one spring there. Yeah. One spring there. That's actually not too bad. It's good and strong. Spring here. Good and strong. These are handy to have as spares because the start from the gold belly there, one of the springs is actually completely broken. So she was only getting we're getting less power than we should be getting. Take all them off anyway. They can be bloody awkward to put on, I can tell you. They come off a lot easier than they go on. But they are the same nearly as the as the diamond. Fiddly. Yeah. Hard to know if these are the ones. She left the factory in with or not. This, as I said, is the one that has the job number written on it and the date in 1982. So that's probably when it was done up. And it's all stamped into it, so it's most likely a fairly good place to do it, I'd say, because most places wouldn't bother doing the likes of that. Okay. That brush there is not bad at all. Plenty of meat left in that lad. Okay. This brush here is not good. That's sort of coming out of it. So that needs to be soldered back in. It's fairly warm. It's, it's not too bad. You see them a lot worse than that now in fairness. So that one there just needs to be soldered back in, which is fine when you have a big solder now. Okay, that one's good. Good as well. So this was definitely repaired because you can see it was actually soldered onto here rather than going through uh, a rivet. That was how they got away with replacing them. So what can we do with the one that's broken? I think I might have an idea where I might be able to look at it. I think I might have an idea. So this I know that back up in this yeah, so that's what's meant to go there. That is a positive one there. So we have to be careful with him, he he doesn't go hurting. So we want to tidy him up a bit. That one was repaired. So we need to take out, if we want to get this all out, we need to take out this lad here. I don't know that I try hit that one yet, I don't think I did. So I find if they are going to come out, a little tap of that to help loosen the threads a bit. And I put a spanner in the end of the screwdriver. Okay, so that's one of them there. Now that said, I've never done this before now, so I haven't. I presume, we have to take this completely off. I say it's awkward enough now. Take him out. The magnet should come loose then, and this should be attached to the magnet. Okay, I'm just trying to think now before I go committing. We don't need to take that out actually. That's 
not holding it. So we don't need to take any of them out. Do we? Once we take out the brushes, it should then should come off. Then should come off. So I'll put them back in, take a picture of them, so we know where we're dealing, what we're dealing with, how it looks. I'm gonna uh, blow off now with the air gun. Then this is a lot of uh, residents, former resident spiders have to be in here. I'd say. Let's take a quick, quick picture of how these are looking, and I'll be back then. Tipex pen could be blocked at the end of it. There we go. We mark him. So that's we mark the positive ones. They're the ones that have to come up from the magnets. going to be very obvious anyway just being over cautious here yeah actually I didn't even need to do that sure look the negative ones are already attached to the case I'm sure okay so they're out if I'm not mistaken that should come off now handy it's nothing holding that on Jesus I tell you one thing that the bushing feels good in it anyway in the end in fairness to it Okay, so the repair jobs were done on these. See the solder there? That bit of solder was a repair. It says you have to replace the, the rivet, so you'd, otherwise you'd have to drill out the rivets and replace them. So they soldered them to them. So that's, that's perfectly acceptable. The only thing being, we do have to fit a better one of these in here now what i'm thinking because i have some spare ones from a dynamo is i might drill out one of them one of them rivets and uh actually bolt in a new a new one in there because i'm not going to be able to get that going in there in such a way that it's going to be anyway solid around for making a, a good connection so I'm not, it does look like they were kind of soldered in in some, some way, shape or form. So I don't think I'm going to be able to do this repair any justice at all unless I go and replace it. And it's fairly well worn anyway. I don't mind drilling out one rivet. It is only earth and there is already one on it. Um... Okay, I'm going to go and have a look at my electrical connections and see. I know there's an old style bullet one that would have probably worked for that. I'm going to have a look through and see what I can come up with. This is the old type bullet connection that I was talking about, connector that I was talking about. So that will go in there. We give it a bit of a squeeze. This is too wide to go into the hole there as is. So what I do is I would uh, file it back a little bit and see that fits in there because this one is solid that would make an, a good enough a connection and then I could try and solder around it I don't know if my solder iron would be strong enough but I could clean it up anyway so I think that's what I'm going to do so I'll bring this over to the bench grinder and I'm just going to uh, make it a little bit thinner just taking a bit off it I'm just going to see just to tap into it I have to be careful because it won't take much to uh, destroy this Sorry, it's very, uh, fairly weak, so we can tap in, we can. So there we go, something like that. And now we can try and put this lad in there and give him a squeeze and it might just stay put, so. So I just want to unravel it a little bit. It's clumpy there, and I'm going to want to just clean it up a little bit to make a better connection.
then you should be able to sort them in. Again, this is only earth and it already has one wire in, so it ain't too bad. That's after getting a good squares there. So it's not repair of the year now by any way, shape or form, but it still should be good enough. So I'm just gonna give this a quick shop last. The business side of it shop lasted there. So I'm gonna try now to pull this wire this uh, plastic brush through the bushing. You see, uh, it's able to, it's a fair bit wider than the bushing, so it might take a bit of pulling through. That's okay, so I'll get a smaller one. I just want to run a bit of penetrating oil on it as well to clean up that, uh, to clean up the, the, bush, the bushing in it. This one looks a bit narrower. <coughs> I'm just going to pull that through with it. I will. So we'll clean it up with this plastic brush head and a squirt. This stuff and that should be enough because it did feel fairly nice. This won't be abrasive, it'll just kind of clean it a bit more. It's a lovely job on it. Really nice job on that now. Happy with that. We'll leave whatever of that stuff is there. We'll leave whatever of that penetrating oil is in there. We'll leave it right where it is. I also gave the end of the, the brushes just the liquid uh, um, shop blaster. So that's handy. I'm going to put my little repair job down below there. So that's good, that part is ready for refitting. We'll get a look at the rest of the starter now. See what's happened inside. So I did have to take the Bendix part on my other spare, uh, my other spare TVO. Uh, Starter, and hey, it wasn't the easiest job. It doesn't, oh, that fits down. I was thinking that's a bit uh, loose. I think that wasn't great, no. So, get the torch. The torch should be on. There we are. So, what we have in here is four. Magnets, so the dining one is two. That all looks fairly good in there. This was also repaired there as well, where those two, uh, see the snot of uh, solder there? It's uh, Yeah, they were repaired. So we're gonna make sure that they're not touching the earth anywhere. Okay, they don't seem to be. So that looks good. And this looks good. So there's probably not a whole lot else to do with this, just clean, like you do with the dyno, clean both faces so that it all holds together nice and snug and you have the least amount of wear 
or end float in the commutator. So here we have truss washer. Okay, shim kind of a tr truss washer. So commutator doesn't look too bad. And that fits over there. And that fit feels really snug. I'll be happy with that. It's not really what you call a bear, it's more of a bush, you know, it's thing. Yeah, it's not a bear in anyway. So we can give this lad a bit of a polish up there. That face, just minimally. The Vendix is the safest thing to probably put on the vice. Maybe it's a bit awkward. Uh, hardly get this held in there, will I? Yeah, well. I was like to get into that fairly handy there, I don't mind. Now, just a little bit kind of, it's like old, old grease nearly. Like we don't have to be too worried here now like about, you know, it's not exactly going to be precision engineer now cleaning this up. It's, it's not the kind of part that's going to be turning at Savage Restaurant. It's just so that we put a bit of grease in it. But it's working on a smooth surface. That's all it is. I'll be putting some of that grey kind of grease in <coughs> the thick stuff. So once I can go around with my Dremel and my metal polish and give him another dart, that's what I'm going to do, I think. So I never checked the Bendix, actually. Yeah, the Bendix is working anyway. So when it spins, it'll throw it into gear, into the flywheel, and then when the engine starts, it'll kick it back out. Teeth don't look too bad. That's pulled in there. It's just a bit dry. I think we've got a bit of grease on that. It could be good to go and a bit more of a polish on that maybe. <coughs> don't want to be fussy. And the same with this will give him a bit of a polish. Oh. <coughs> just a bit of dry grease on it. More than anything else. Hit it in here and there because the water can get in, unfortunately, from outside. Try and smooth it off, start with this and then Dremel, metal polish. That should be enough. These are, you know, they're not going to be turning fast or for very long if your engine's in good nick. Quick clean up. Same with the commutator there. Doesn't seem to be any kind of bad scrapes on this from the brushes. So someone obviously had put the springs in right in the middle. That does help.
It's just so that it all just makes a nice clean contact with the brushes. That's all we're looking for. Very similar to the dynamo. Do I think the starter is going to work? <coughs> I do, I do. I would be surprised at this stage now. It's not going to because there doesn't seem to be anything to uh, get a feel for what's left on it. Could be fairly worn actually here now. Yeah. A whole lot of depth left on that. But all will be revealed. I think that's also a wearing part there as well, along with your brushes. We'll talk the brushes. They're worn a little bit quicker because they're usually kind of a carbon kind of a metal, which is soft metal. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So. Yeah, let's have a look here for the polish. Because I'm half thinking I might just go and start greasing things up, but what's the point? If I want to polish, I'm better off doing that. Now, when it's stripped, so the stripping and everything again. So, just try and have a look for my polishing pad and I'll come back and we'll give that a dark metal polish. 